Hello, I just finished watching the first season of Sweet Tooth, a post-apocalyptic Netflix TV series. Uh, there's, and the apocalypse is the sick comes, which people get and die, and combined with the appearance and the birth of children only in hybrid form from now on, whether that is deer or snake or pig or various other animals. No human child past this, this seems seemingly this cutoff point is born except as a hybrid animal. Chaos ensues as the majority of people, you get the sense, die and those left are in sort of that Mad Maxian kind of die, you know, kill or be killed kind of state. And what right rises, we find out later in the series, is the la this last man group led by the General Abbott, who is determined to A, find a cure at any cost, but B, exterminate all hybrids exterminate them or apparently gather them for dissection for investigation purposes though mostly it has been extermination uh, the, the series opens with this fellow driving out of the city hurriedly with all these reports of the sick and hybrids on the on the radio with a little baby boy whom over the years he 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 raises he is called Bubba Papa Papa Bubba P U B B A by the little boy whose name is got he he says is Gus and there's they've he's fenced off this area and it's like you never cross the fence and if you see anyone you hide and you never let them hear you talk um, so drilled through one day a guy comes realize later it's one of the last men he um he says i have to go deal with this guy he comes back and he comes back with the sick because he had gotten out before it had actually kind of gotten to gotten to the area and he dies and gus is left alone gus this deer boy he's, he's he has sprouted he sprouted antlers and has deer ears and uh, he can hear extremely well seems to be very kind of quick on quick on his feet he actually has feet not hooves so because later you do find that there's um, hybrids who are more more animal more animally than he is and uh, he eventually does cross out and start tra traveling because he wants to go and find his mother whom he has a picture of. So he picks up along the way this big, gruff, I think he calls him Big Man, um, Man Jeopard, a big black man who in a former former life, the before time was uh, like an NHL linebacker, like, you know, blocker, one of those positions that you have to be a towering, gigantic person for. And who at first who, a saves him from a from a group of the last men who were like wow this is a big one we've never had one this old before saves him from them uh, is able is capable of great violence and you find out as it goes along he actually was a last man but he stopped doing that he stopped stopped that he he wasn't proud but you had to do things you weren't proud of in that time to survive and apparently one of them was getting drafted into these this group of brutalistic what very kind of reads as a white white national white nationalist uh group kind of militia all the kind of the that kind of side of things on american politics and they are they're going on this quest to go to colorado red rock to find to find his his mother uh, yeah yeah and what they find is quite, you know, dismays, dismays, disillusions Gus. 
there's um, a voiceover, voiced over by, uh, of course the name has gone right out of my head, by a distinguished older actor who's doing kind of a very kind of semi-folksy, very kind of emotionalist, emotionalist narration, which uh, I vary on as it goes as it goes along it, there's a very much at the very final climax there's a narration which seems a little on the heavy pressy downside narration can be extremely tough uh very underliny or very kind of cheaty like oh we couldn't actually express this so we're going to actually just have a voiceover telling you what to feel kind of thing um, I don't think it actually needed as much voiceover as, as it has at the end. They're really pushing their thumb down on the scale. But really what, they, what they're showing on the actual thing is, is enough. Is enough that while Gus, of course, at the very end of this, this season is completely in, is in great dire trouble, he's also found uh, great fellowship at the same time. And unexpected connections have been made to various other characters in the book uh, of, of people that they had thought had they had lost as well so that's really good uh there's she he he in, a, in, in addition to jeopard the big man they meet bear who is a part of this animal sort of hybrid liberation front where it's this group of human kids but who are really bitter and angry against organizations like the last men and have decided to organize themselves in opposition of it to save all the hybrids who they think are kind of a miracle miracle of nature something that maybe nature is actually producing to kind of replace humans who have obviously so fucked up so fucked up the world and have a very much kind of a lost boys feel them even though the main people of it like bear are are girls which is more kind of Greta Thromberg or something like that. Um, and there is that kind of sense of, hey, we're the, the next generation and looking back at our other generations and like, what have you guys done? That sort of, that sort of vibe to it, which is good. There's very much a lot of themes of family, of what is family, of betrayal of family, of, 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 um, yeah, everyone's gonna bark. We'll see. Um, there's, it, it's very you know found family, uh, a lot of stuff like that. There's also just the ideas of, yeah, generational divide on stuff, generational divide, political divides, all the, all the kind of the fissures that we very much see, and because this is, I don't know when this was filmed or conceived, but. Uh, it's, it feels very informed by our experience of the pandemic and, you know, people wearing masks and things like that. So this was sort of one of these whim, whim watches for me. I just happened to, so it's Sweet Tooth, I think I heard of that. Probably heard about it from Grace Rand Randolph at Beyond the Trailer and decided, oh, I'll give this a try and it was rather a joy to watch uh, there's so many so many series that I watch nowadays there's so much a plethora of that you watch one episode you watch two episodes and you kind of go ah do I want to continue with it there's a lot of assessing and this one was just a very kind of it rolled rolled right through it uh, enjoying myself the whole time and not being uh uh Oh God! When oh it switched here or like arcane, I I I saw I waded through that because of the imagery being so strong, but finding the the script not as strong and a lot of problems with it. That one with mental health, especially, was didn't didn't I uh, we f I finished that that season. I d I very much doubt if I'd go back to another season of that. This one, it's like ah, hey, something I actually enjoyed and loved. I do think it's a little bit sweet, too syrupy, on its on its narration, but it's got a the lead. I guess is Gus. Well, co-lead is Gus, and 
a child actor could be a really hard thing to get through, especially such a kind of a sweet, naive character as as Gus. But it's balanced off probably by some really good good acting from the adults. Jeopard. Oh, I didn't even mention um, Udi. Uh, Udi, who is uh, the scientist who's sort of the other half of the story of he and his wife in a button-down suburban thing where whenever somebody gets sick, they saran wrap them to a chair in their house and burn the entire house down. That's kind of the level of paranoia and a desperation that is happening amongst the surviving human beings. You know, these aren't even last men, though they seem to be probably supported by stuff like organizations like the last men like the last men are the guys who do all the dirty work so that people like this can live in 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 tight button down super button down suburban houses he is he is a former doctor who was just burned out by not burned out but he couldn't save he was like a, chi a children's doctor you get the sense and now what he's been called on to do is sort of like the dissections of these hybrid children, of pulling pulling them apart, trying to find a cure. And he he stopped, but now he's getting pulled back in. And there's a question of what you will do to save the ones you love, because his wife is infected, and it turns out that it is bits of the hybrid children processed are what he's been using to to keep his wife alive all this time but it's like yeah it's murdering children for it now he removed himself from that the doctor who who was a part of that said oh well, i'm dying of breast cancer so you have to do it now turns out no she just <laughs> she couldn't do it anymore so she had so she had made up this story. She, she escaped her own moral responsibility in that. That didn't help her because the general found her, found out she didn't have the information, and just had her killed. So it's... And yeah, the whole, the whole story is... The whole threads of this narrative are the two of the, this doctor who falls under the control of the general then you reuniting with not you re that thread and Gus's thread coming together and what is the doctor going to do Udi going to do to Gus uh, in the name of saving the one he loves you know dissecting the one that we as the audience love though actually his 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 wife is his is his main strength and is quite amazing too. So that's very strong adult acting all the way along in this kind of fairy, fairy tale apocalypse story, I would call, because Gus is definitely answering the call to adventure and crossing the threshold and his companions along the way uh, very much. And we're, we're in the heart of darkness, I guess, or something like that. So will Gus bring salvation to everyone? We shall see. We shall see how they they decide to play out this particular hero's hero's journey. All right. I will leave it there. More videos later.